So more and more, we are seeing for 2015 a big push to do something different with your lawn. I mean, we love the look of the lush grass, but in many parts of the country, uh, many parts of the world, you know, water is an issue. And who has the time to mow every weekend, right? Right. And I mean, especially in the, on the West Coast, you know, in the Southwest, where basically lawns aren't even supposed to be here, you know, and it's just been, it, it was sort of a function of, you know, the climate in the last 30, 40 years mm. where we had a ton of rain and things worked out fine. But now all of a sudden, guess what? Things have changed and communities are now incentivizing you to remove lawn mm-hmm. and replace it with more sustain- sustainable, naturally occurring foliage, plants, or, Dry hard- materials. or hardscape that actually, uh, you know, prevents uh, the, a ton of water usage. I got to tell you, I have this running sort of resentment for this neighbor of mine who I think put the put the note on my trash can when I first moved in a couple of years ago because I didn't bring them in right away after the garbage trucks came. And he said, I thought you were supposed to be the fix-it guy, right? Like a little passive-aggressive note. Well, this guy runs his sprinklers all the time, all night long, and water's literally gushing down the street. So I see the post-it po- notes. You know what I mean? I In see my a future, post-it note. Right? I thought you were the don't waste water guy. Don't waste guy. water guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Hey, who, who are you? My name is Eric guy? Stromer, Fix-It Guy. See, and I'm Cindy Dole. You're listening to Home Wizards. And so where we're going with this... Well, we're not talking about hating your neighbors. No. We want just you to little, be fr- just, a, just a little friendly. There might be a little friendly tension. Banter. Yeah. But we are talking about ways to rethink your front lawn or right. the back lawn because right. it doesn't have to be a depressing sense of loss. There are some really cool, beautiful things that you can do to eliminate the grass or maybe just part of the grass. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, speaking of that, what I did in my front lawn was I took, you know, a, the front, I have a huge big front lawn area. With that kind of a crescent circular driveway. It's exactly. And so it's great. It's been wonderful for the kids and the dog to run around on the in the afternoon playing stuff. But I don't want to just keep watering this lawn that, you know, is, is essentially a waste of water. So what I did is I, I, I cut into the lawn about eight to 10 feet on three different sides that border the street and the two driveways and created that uh, a garden bed essentially with really low flow sprinkler heads and sustainable plants that are kind of indigenous to the area. So now I've I've literally cut half my lawn out See? and I save a ton of water. It still looks good. You still have that lawn feel. But so it was a compromise. You, yeah. you didn't lose all of no, it. No, no. You shaved some of it. And it becomes okay. sort of an informal border uh-huh. to the street and the driveway, which I really like too, because people used to you know have their dogs run on the lawn and all that stuff. And now there's just this informal border of a planting bed that mm. really it looks great and actually saves water at the same time. And it basically says, don't walk on our lawn. It says, don't walk in my planting <laughs> bed. You know, people still do. I still find like, you know, Dr. Pepper cans in oh, there, geez. you know, and stuff like that. But what are you going to do? All right. So let's talk about some creative things. So step one, you could shave off part of your lawn like Eric did and repurpose a section of it now to some other planting, right? It could That's be, exactly right. You, you use some drought-tolerant plants and things, or you could even have no plants whatsoever. You could go with all, like, permeable paving. Sure. And potted plants. Yeah, and the and key is permeable paving because hard concrete also is a, is a, is a place that can, you know, create a, an issue for you in terms of your carbon footprint, right? Because... It's just, you know, sun beating down on concrete and the rain then runs off and it might not be as efficient as if it's permeable where that can actually, the rainwater can get into it and It's be, like a reservoir, Exactly, right? mm-hmm. exactly. And, and it you, looks really cool. It looks really pretty and really great and, and uh, it's less expensive. Too. So in, imagine whether you have like a front lawn or a side yard or a backyard that ha- where you have some grass. Right. You could take, you know, maybe whoever is in your family with you, you don't agree about getting rid of all the lawn, but let's say we're going to compromise and just take a a little bit away and now put some of this permeable stuff right there on that section and you can create an instant little paved seating area with a couple of potted plants, maybe even put like a little wall, maybe, you know, some kind of a stoned stacked flagstone kind of a wall as a barrier and it creates a little privacy. It creates a zone. Right. And uh, by the way, the other thing I think that happens with front lawns is that you may not utilize that space. It almost becomes a 
visual barrier to the street rather than a, a place that you go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, a destination. So you can create little terrace decking areas, you know, that might like, for example, say you live on a slight hill. What if you kind of dig out some of that lawn and create little seating areas that, that have their own individual sections to them, even with maybe different style plantings and seating areas that give you not only a backyard, but now a front area to create more space outdoors. I mm-hmm. think it's a really nice idea. And if you're thinking of privacy, you're going, okay, wait a minute, I'm in the front lawn area. I don't know if I want people walking by and seeing me if I am having a nice little seating area. I'd like it to feel like I'm in my own little oasis. Take a cue for some of some of the different restaurants. I mean, it's amazing. We went to this one restaurant. It was a parking lot. They turned a parking lot. I mean, the cars were literally feet from us, but they were so creative with potted plants right. and string lights and umbrellas. We felt like we were in our own little south, private In the world. south of France. We had no idea yeah. that there were cars. I mean, uh. we knew logically, but we didn't physically think about them because we were so protected. And so you can take some of those elements to make your little private zone. Let's say you have an area where there's traffic in your front, you know, on that front sidewalk, there's a street. Well, why not use, you know, create a a tall hedge or some other kind of a barrier, a living wall, if you will, that now, you know, combine that with seating and it's kind of cool. And maybe even a little water feature to drown out some of the sound of the traffic on the other side of that little barrier that you've created. And that, that just always gives you a nice welcoming feeling as you walk into the front door. Yeah. So, I mean, we're thinking about ways to not only uh, save some water, but also save some time for you because it gets to be kind of a pain to have to every weekend... Well, here I go again. I got to low, you know, I got to move the lawn. Is someone going to ever want to do the lawn with a lawnmower? Bah, bah, yeah, bah, you know. yeah. How about using pavers, too? I mean, I've seen this done very creatively where you have some some chunks of concrete or some other material that's the paver, and then you have a little bit of grass or maybe a, um, a low-growing, even foot traffic friendly ground cover in between those square paver stones. I like that look. Yeah. So it almost has kind of a modern look, doesn't yep, it? Yep. So you're breaking up a lawn with big, you know, monolithic pieces of concrete that, yeah. that actually give you a walk space, you know, but and it can but take you somewhere. It can take you somewhere and it gives you, it breaks up that field of green with more contemporary cement tones. However, what that does is it, it cuts your lawn by three quarters. Yeah, right? it does. You still have the feel of grass. I think it's great. I do too. How about turning your front lawn into a succulent haven? I mean, we love succulents, and this is something that doesn't have to be just in, you know, the West Coast. Succulents can grow well, actually, in a lot of places, and and they can be very hardy even in in colder temperatures. Um, But the idea is the colors of these succulents and the different heights, and many of them flower, now you've got what looks to be almost like a coral reef. That's right. As your front yard, because you've got peaches and blues and pinks and greens, and some are very fleshy and thick, and others are more, you know, shallow and from agaves to you name it. And it really works whether you, you put them right in the soil, you know, get rid of the lawn um, and have like a nice little pathway. Sure. I think it's kind of cool. That's great. You know what else I love too are the, the no mow grasses, you know, the big long wavy grasses that you that yes. you see sometimes where they're... The just, natural grasses. It's the natural grasses, and it just ends up looking like, uh, you know, a, a field somewhere or a meadow. Like you're hiking. It looks like you have a backyard that is now your hiking destination, a meadow, like you say. Yeah. Right. Things like blue blue grandma, uh, uh, buffalo grass. That Love, all that. Yeah. Love all that. Love all that. Prestige is another good one. Because it's, it's no fuss, and it gives you lush, and it's very trendy now. It just basically turned your front yard into something that you would see, you know, on a hike, on That's a bike it. ride, That's right? It. We'll put all this on the website, as always, at yourhomewizards.com. Email us. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, we love to improve your home and improve your life. And remember this, the key is under the mat. While you place the flowers in the vase that